Today, we're going to introduce question and answering in NLP. When I say question answering, I mean question answering in the form of a natural language search. So you imagine when you, you go to a shop and you, you ask a shop assistant, you know, where is this item? It kind of looks like cookies, but it's not a cookie. It, it tastes really good and it's freshly baked. You want the shop assistant to, to hopefully be able to point you in the right direction of, of whatever that thing is that you are you're asking for. Now, most search systems rely on a keyword search. So you need to know the, the name of whatever it is you're looking for, the terminology. So in, in that case, we would have to know what the name is of those uh, cookie-like things. But if we don't know the name, we, we, can't, we can't search for them. So that is, is where we have, we have natural language question answering. Natural language question answering replicates the type of question we first asked the shop system where we were just describing the object that we were looking for. Now, this can be incredibly useful, particularly if you are working in, for example, a big organization. I think most of us that have worked in a big organization will have some experience of the difficulties of finding uh, internal information. All of the information in most companies is stored behind some sort of internal portal. And they're based on keyword search. So you kind of need to know what you're looking for to find what you're looking for, which is sometimes difficult, particularly when it's um, natural language documents like PDF documents. So that, that's just one example of, of where you can where you can use this. But I, I won't go any I won't go on any further. We'll, we'll just kind of dive into it and we'll start having a look at the the different forms of of Q and A. Okay, so uh, we are focusing on a particular part of, of Q&A um, question answering called open domain question answering. And what that means is that the scope of our potential questions is quite broad. So we, we have to rely on a NLP solution to, to do it properly. We can't rely on, on a set of specific rules in our code like we could with closed domain, uh, where, where the scope of potential questions and answers is a lot smaller. So within within open domain Q&A, uh, we have these three different types of, of, of models or almost like pipelines or stacks of models. So along the top, we have that extractive and abstractive. And along the side, we have closed book and open book. Now, open book is, uh, what well, this this kind of refers to like it, students in an exam where you have an open book exam so you can refer to uh, some external materials your your, your book uh, whereas closed book you, you just kind of have to rely on the knowledge inside your head so it's exactly the same with with q a open book uh, the the models are allowed to refer to a external source of information whether that is a, a database or, or the internet or it could, you know it could be could be anything just as long as it's not the the model itself it's referring to an external source of information whereas a closed book the all of the knowledge that the model uses to answer the question must come from within itself um, its own trained weights so extractive QA um, is where we extract information from a particular piece of text. So obviously we can only extract information if we're uh, pulling it from somewhere. So there's only an open book option for extractive Q and A. And we'll, we'll go into each one of these uh, for, like in more depth later on, uh, but also the, the IR that you see there. So we've got this retriever reader model. That's the sort of model architecture, the pipeline that I mentioned. IR refers to information retrieval. And reading comprehension is that extraction of the, of the text. 
Then we have abstractive QA. Uh, it's also called generative QA in some places as well. And this uses a retriever generator architecture for the open book version. And that is again, an information retrieval step followed by a text generation model. Okay, so that's you know like GPT uh, models are, are good examples of, of text generators. Uh, and then the closed book option, we only have we only have an abstractive QA option there, and that just uses a generation model. There's no information retrieval. Like I said, it's just relying on its own um, internal knowledge or internal weights. So I just kind of left these notes also just as much for me as they are for you. So at the, at the top there, that's just open domain Q and A. Uh, I was going to talk about it, but we already we already covered it, so I'm not going to mention it again. We're going to be using squad examples throughout the, the code that we're going to be setting up, and we'll explain that on the on the next page. And you know, across all these different uh, pipelines, Q and A pipelines, there's there's four different components uh, that we'll be using. The, the index data and retriever. So those two together, they are the IR set over here. So the, the information retrieval set, and we also see that here as well. And then we have this reader and generator. So we, we mentioned reader and generator already. So the reader is our reading comprehension set and the generator is the text generation set. That's all it is. Okay, so, so the data we're going to be using uh, is probably worth mentioning that so you, so you understand what we're actually putting into the models. So we're using this squad data set. Squad data set is probably the most popular um, data set for, for fine tuning question and answering models, at least for extractive QA models. And it consists of, of three different components. You have a question, a context, and an answer. Now, the question is obviously just a question. And then you have a context, which is a longer piece of text, um, as you can, can see here, which usually contains an answer to your question. And the answer is, is you know, this more specific uh, chunk of text. So the question here, the answer to that would be the Denver Broncos. So that's the data we're going to be using, and and let's move on to sort of the first the first model, uh, and this is our open book extractive uh, QA model. So given a question, so so the question we had before, which is this uh, which NFL team, uh, so on, we pass that question down into our retriever model. So down here, this is the first thing that happens, the retriever model converts that question into a, a sentence vector and that sentence vector or, or query query vector it is passed along to our database in here uh, from this database it is compared to a lot of other vectors which each represent the context from our data. So before we even before we even do this, this is at the sort of question answering um, inference time. Before we even do this, we would actually pass all of our contexts, so the, the contexts into our retriever model, which would convert them into vectors and store them inside the database. So when, after we've done that, we're on the you know we have a question, pass that to the retriever, that gets converted into a query vector. It's passed through a database. Then it finds the, the top K. So, so top K, usually what you refer to here, uh, most similar uh, context vectors. Those most similar context vectors pass back through our retriever, or it doesn't really have to be passed through our retriever, it's just how the, how the diagram looks. But in reality, it's just passed all the way over to our reader model here. Uh, the reader model is where we extract certain, you know, a more specific answer from the larger context. So given a paragraph, we might extract a couple of words that answer the question, which is also passed to our reader model up here. Okay. Uh, and, and then we get our answer. So that last 
little step with the with the uh, the reader model. I've just visualize it a little more here. Um, so we have our context over here, which has been retrieved by a retrieve model and, and index database. Then we have our, our question up here, pass those both into our reader, and that reader will output a, a start position and end position of the context. So uh, from here to here, that it believes contains the answer. And, and in that case, it would be Denver Broncos. So yeah, that that is extractive Q&A. So let's move over uh, to the code and, and sort of work through how we put all of that together. Okay, so the first thing we, we obviously need to do is, is get some data. So we're gonna be using the, the squad data set, like I said. So we'll, I'm gonna go ahead and run all of this. We'll take a moment. So all I've done, uh, so we can see we have what we talked about before. We have the, the context, the question and answer. Now, in this case, we actually have a, um, a couple of answers. That's fine. We, we don't really need to worry about the, the answers because we're not fine tuning a model here. We're just indexing the, the context. And then we're also going to use this question later on as well. So one thing I want to point out is that we have, because we have multiple questions or different questions for each context, we have um, context duplicates. So the first thing I've done down here is actually just remove those. Um, so I've just kept the first example of each context there. Uh, and that reduced the, the data set size to just over 2000. And then, so we have our data when what we need to do before we even start uh, querying and, and, and going through that whole QA inference process. Uh, we, we need to actually index all of our context into, into context vectors. And we do that with the, the same retriever model that we use to index our query vector or, or question vector. So this is going to be our retriever model. That's from the sentence transformers library. And let me just show you, uh, you know, how I know to use this model. Okay, so this is the esper.net uh, docs. So I come over here, I go to pre-trained models. So these are all the, the models that we can use um, out of the box. And I scroll down. Now there's a load of models here, but I want specifically, I want Q&A models. So go down a little bit more and we come to the section multi QA models. Okay, and from here, we, we have these two tables. Now, these ones here are to be used if you are uh, comparing your vectors using the dot product similarity, which we're not, we're using cosine similarity. So we use one of these three. And this one here is, is just the quickest of those those models. It's not, it's not the best performing, but it is the fastest. So I'm just gonna go with, with that one. So that's the model we're using. Let's go back to the code, okay. Uh, let me run that and we'll see a, a sentence transformer uh, object output here. Okay, so we just have our uh, transform model. It's a, it's a based on BERT. Uh, there's a pooling layer and it's using uh, mean pooling and a normalization layer. Uh, we don't really need to worry about that. Um, and then once we, once you have the model and you have your context uh, text, you want to go ahead and actually create those context vectors. Now, this is obviously going to take a little bit of time, so I'm not going to run it uh, because I already have all of these context vectors in my index, uh, but this is a code you need to run in order to create those, um, those context vectors, and they will be stored in a new feature called encoding. Okay, so up here, we have all these features here. We would have another one called encoding, which would store all of those um, those vectors. So let, let me just show you what that does. So we're using model encode here. Um, and I'm just gonna go like 
hello world. Let's see what we get. Um, obviously, we're actually converting to a list as well. So let me just do that. And we just get that, that query vector. Uh, length of that is always probably something worth noting. I think it's 384. Okay, so it's a bit shorter than normal. Normally we see uh, 768. I assume this is why it's a, or one of the reasons why it's a faster model. So uh, at this point, we, we need to create our, our vector database where we index all of our context vectors and where our retriever will be referring to to return relevant context. So uh, for this, we're using Pinecone. You can also use Fice as well. And we there's a, there's a whole set of articles and videos that I've done uh, that are dedicated to Fice. Uh, but, you know, it takes a, a long time to set up and it, it's difficult to to get the uh, performance to a, a good point. Um, so we're just going to use Pinecone here, super fast. It's it's free and, and so on. So there's no reason not to. Um, so I'm using app.pinecone.io. You go there and you see I already have my, I've already logged in, uh, but you for you it will pop up with um, sign in and you'll get an API key. Okay, I have these uh, two API keys here. I'm going to see this one because I'm going to delete it after this. So you can't go on and, and steal all of my, my indexes if you, if you wanted to do that. And I'm just going to copy that key value and go back in the code. I'm just going to write, I'm going to store it in a variable called API key. Okay. Um, yeah, that that's it. And then from here, oh, I also need to import Pinecone. Okay, so I import Pinecone and then I initialize my like connection to Pinecone. Um, so I write Pinecone init. I need to pass my API key. And I also need to state which cloud environment I, I want to use. So I'm gonna use US, I think it's US West one is that right gcp and i will run that it will take a moment to, to establish that connection and then from there what you will need to do although i will not because i i have already done it is you'll need to create an index so you want to um use an index name here so i think i'm using qa index and the only other thing you actually need to pass here is the dimensionality of your, your index. So earlier on, we, we are here is, so we have the, the 384. That is what we're going to be using because all of our vectors are going to be, are going to have that dimensionality. So I'm going to copy that, uh, paste it in here. And that, if I run that, that would create the, the index. I'm not going to run it because I already, I already have the index. Uh, but for you, obviously, you want to uh, you want to go and do that. So we have our index. Uh, we need to populate the index. We don't have anything in there yet. So we need to create a index instance. So this connects specifically to the QA index because you can have multiple indexes in in Pinecone. This is connecting to one of them. And what I want to do. After that is, I want to upsert, which is just you upload and insert the vectors into uh, into the index. So when I'm doing that, I, I don't want to I don't want to push all of them at once because there's quite a few of them. To be honest, probably could with with these ones. Uh, depends on uh, which internet services you, you you're going through to to send this. But what I'm going to do is, is just batch it. Okay, so you can see how that you know, one way of doing that is you know so many ways of doing it it's just a, a nice and easy one that I don't really need to think about too much so I would uh, from tqdm the auto import tqdm okay so this is just for the the progress bar and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this list of things to upset and when you are upserting to Pinecone, you want to have, for each sample, you want to have like a, a tuple, which contains an ID for your for your vector and the, the vector itself. So uh, you can also add metadata as well, but 
we're just going to keep it simple. We're going to go with ID and the, the vector. So I'm looping through the data set up here. So the QA data set, which doesn't have encodings. So I can't actually run this, it's fine. Um, but in there we would have encoding and we can do that for V in. I wonder if I can just, let me just run this while I'm writing this out. Probably won't take too long. Nope, I'm wrong. It, it will take a while. Okay, well, let me stop that. <laughs> Doesn't matter. So I'm just, I'm not going to run this, but I'll just show you what it looks like. So for V in, uh, and then in here, we want QA. Okay, so that, that will loop through there and get those um, encodings. And then uh, what we would do is we'd say, okay, for I in TQDM, so we use our, our progress bar here. And I want to go through the range zero to the length of upsets. So the length of the, or the number of samples that we have in our data set. And I'm gonna do it in batches of five. Okay, so from there, I want to say, okay, where is the end of my batch? And I'm just going to say I plus 50. Okay, because we're going in batches of 50. Um, but then when we get to the end, unless the number of samples that you have in your, your data uh, fits perfectly into 50, or, or 50 fits perfectly into the number of samples you have, uh, you won't have an even batch at the end. So you... Uh, we want to check, okay, if uh, if I end uh, is greater than the length of upset, so this means we've kind of gone over for the last batch, uh, just make I end equal to the length of that upset. So we just go to the end of the data rather than going over it and, and triggering a an error. And then and then this is and then it's time for the actual upsert itself. So we just write index upsert and we write uh, vectors equals upserts i to i n. And that's it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do uh, rather than rather than just because I don't have the encodings. I'll just take the title maybe and put it in there just so you can see logic uh, behind what we're actually doing here. Obviously, I'm not going to oops, uh, this because that would cause an error because the, the title isn't a, a vector. Um, so I'm just going to run that so you can see what we're actually doing there. Uh, yeah, let me run that. Okay, so really fast. We're just going through it very quickly. So I to I end. Is, is just that, that's the final batch. So the final batch is going from position uh, 2050 up to uh, 267, which is the end of our, our data set. Okay. So now we want to move on to, we want to move on to actually the, the querying. So the actual sort of QA inference part of the, of the, uh, of the video. So here we're going to be using the, same thing we did up here. So where where was it? Where we encoded? It's annoying. Um, so here where we encoded the context, but we're going to encode the um, the actual query. We don't have a query yet. Though. So what is our query going to be? Let's make it the same as. Yes, which NFL team represented and so on, All right? So, and take that, put this in. Um, actually, I wanted to put in query up here, so <laughs> let me swap that. Okay, and that is our query vector. Okay, execute. And with that, we can we can query 
uh, if you if you followed along the, the FICE video is very similar. So we write index.query. We, we pass our query vector and we also include the top K. So this is, you know, of the most similar uh, other vectors in our, in our index, how many of those do we want to return? So we're going to return the five most similar uh, in, in this instance. So that's going to return those contexts. Let's have a look at what we, what we get there. Uh, so, oh, here, so I have, here you need to include the query within a list, otherwise you're going to get that error. Uh, because usually you can query with, with multiple vectors. Um, so if you're, only, if you're only querying one vector, you need to embed that in the same sort of format you would uh, if it was multiple vectors. And so we run that and we get this, this ID here uh, and a score. Okay, so this is the, the, you know, how similar was your query vector to whichever vector is represented by this ID. Okay, now we, what we want to do now is, is map those IDs or pull out those IDs from, from XC and map those back to our original data set. Uh, we could also store the text in, in, in Pinecone as well, which is completely fine. You can store it as metadata. But what I'm going to do here is literally just use uh, Pinecone for the vectors. So I'm going to store the text locally um, and extract that using these IDs. It's not the most efficient way for sure, uh, but I just want to sort of show you the pipeline for extractive uh, QA. So we want to get those vectors, which we can do by accessing, let me actually pull it up here. So we have XC. So we have, we have results as the first sort of zero index of the list and then matches. Okay. So results zero matches. Okay, and that gives us a list of, of all of the items that we returned. And we just want to go through that. So we want to just copy that. And we just want to get the, we want to get the uh, ID. ID for X in, in this, okay? IDs, let's see what we get. We have our IDs now. And then we, so like before, now, earlier on where we remove the duplicates. So here, I'm going to do that again. This time I'm just going to, I'm going to do it for only keeping these, these IDs. Okay. So um, I'm going to call it context, kind of aligned to, to our charts earlier. And we're going to say Q if, if X ID is in IDs else it's false and yeah that should work I think yeah so now we have a number of rows and we can go through those and extract the the context so if I go uh, for or oh, actually we should just be able to write context context so from that and you see we get a list of, of all the context that we've returned so we can see these are, are relevant to our question right so our question was um, which NFL team represented the AFC at Super Bowl 50. And I think this first one is actually the, the context that we, we want to return. Um, so it should have, yep, Denver Bronco, Broncos there, which is going to be our, our answer. So that's cool. Now, if we, let's have a look at that chart. If we have a look at this, uh, we see, okay, we have, we, Pass our context into the database. We've done all of that indexing, uh, and and this time or, or now, just now, we have taken our question, create the query vector, returned the similar context, and now what we need to do over here. So this is we want to pass those onto our reader model, which is going to extract the answer uh, from those contexts. So let's let's do that. It's pretty pretty straightforward. So we are going to use um, 
we face transformers. And they have a pipeline class, which allows us to put like a Q&A uh, pipeline together really easily, just so I don't need to read a part of the, the pipeline. Um, so I'm gonna write NLP equals pipeline. Uh, and then in here we need to, so we need our model name. I'm gonna use uh, deep sets Electra base squad two. That's a deep set, by the way, not deep sets. And in here, I want to say, okay, tokenizer. I want to use that one. And model. I also want to use that one. Okay. And after that, and we also need to say, okay, what are we actually doing? We're doing question answering because we, we haven't specified that. So we are doing question answering. Okay, that that's it. We that's our sort of reader model pipeline. So we can now what we'll do is we'll go for context in context context. So looping through each one of those um, each context that we extracted before, we want to extract the the answer. So what I'm going to do is print. NLP, and we need to pass our, our question and our context. So the, the question is our query, so the, the actual string, and the context is is the context again, the actual string. And let's print that. Have I done? Ah, sorry. Um, so this is context here. Is that right as well? Okay, yeah. Okay, so then we, we get our answers and, and straight away you can see uh, the very top answer is, is Denver Broncos. Okay, uh, and, and the score is good. So the score for that is like 99.9 .9 and so on. Uh, if you look at all of these, the score's pretty low, like incredibly low. The only one that is not incredibly low, even though it still actually is incredibly low, it is this final one here, which is actually Denver. I'm you know, not really sure how it's pulling Denver through. Let's, uh, let's have a quick look. So this one here apparently does mention, yeah, cool. So th this is actually, it's pulling the right answer from this context as well, uh, which is, not even what I, I didn't even know that was there. So that, that's pretty, that is pretty cool. Okay, so that's our extractive QA pipeline. So let's move on to the abstractive QA pipeline. So let's have a look at some charts again. Okay, so this is our abstractive QA pipeline. So, I mean, if should really be quite obvious. Um, very similar to the extractive QA pipeline, the abstractive QA has this big yellow blob on it, which is different uh, because that's a generator model, not a reader model. So rather than, you know, before we kind of extracted Denver Broncos from the text, the generator model is going to look at the, the question and the context. It's going to, in, in a very similar way to how the reader model does does so it looks at both of them uh, but rather than extracting the answer it's going to generate its own answer uh, based on that which is i think pretty interesting so i mean it's super easy to set up so let's let's go back to the, the code again okay so up here we have our um well extractive pipeline i'm going to swap this out for a abstractive pipeline so what i'm going to do is swap the model name I'm going to use this Y Genite, and it's in the Bart. Uh, explain like I'm five model, okay? And the task is actually not question answering because we're generating text. So uh, question answering to hugging face is extractive question answering. Uh, what we're doing now actually comes under text to text generation, okay? Or sequence to sequence. Let me write that down. Sequence to sequence. So yeah, slightly different. 
let's let's run that. Hopefully, I got the name right. Okay, uh, and then from here, so we, well, we do something different again. So we're going to write NLP. Well, let me uh, may as well keep it in here, right? So it's NLP, uh, but this time we're just passing a, a string. Now our string uh, for this model, for this specific model, is question, and in there we we pass our query followed by the, the context. Okay, and then obviously in there we, we pass the, the context, right? Um, so we do that. Uh, let me put on a new line, make it nicer, more easier to read. And let me just break after the first one because I think it takes a little bit longer to actually uh, run this and I want to show you that we can, we can modify the output a little bit. Okay, so you see this and it's like, mm, yeah, that's not very useful, is it? The AFC has split the AFC and NFC. Yeah, okay, um, <laughs> that's fine. It's not really useful, but we can we can modify this. It, so at the moment, you see it's kind of repetitive. Um, so there's a few things you can you can add to make it less so, uh, and also things you can add to make it look at more sort of options essentially. So to make it look or consider more options, uh, which is obviously going to take longer to process as well, uh, you increase the number of beams. Uh, this can also make it more repetitive. Uh, here we go. So, you know, we see nothing, <laughs> nothing good here. So to reduce that repetitiveness, we want to write do sample equals true. See this, okay? And you say, oh, so still repetitive. So we can also add temperature. So by default, this is one. So I'm going to put it to 1.5, and this is basically like the randomness of the output. So we're just adding a little bit of noise in there. Uh, and again, not great. So let's push up the the max length. See what we get. Okay, so we get it's not it's not repetitive anymore, but it's not you know there's not really anything useful in here. And to be honest, that is kind of extractive, abstractive QA when you apply it to uh, questions that have a specific answer, like the Denver Broncos. Abstractive QA is better for more well abstract questions. So let's say you know I'm like okay. Do you know? Do teams in in the in the NFL really care that much about Super Bowl? Is it like their only focus? So I could change my question. Like that's a much more abstract question, right? It's not. There's no, you know, in our context, there's probably nowhere uh, that really answers that for us. So we can say, okay, my new query. I should do it up here so we actually retrieve. Um, stuff as well so let me remove that i'm also i'm not going to remove that i'm not going to remove that although i'm going to make it simpler so i'm just going to put this together remove this so i want to run through the whole process right not just not just the um the first process because in, in the abstractive QA we are retrieving vectors as well. So what I'm gonna do is say, okay, do NFL teams only care about playing at the Super Bowl? Okay, it's not perfect. Uh, the question is not very specific. It's just, you know, it's like, like you're talking to someone and you're like, do they only care about this? So. Okay, let me let me run this again. This is going to retrieve some context for us. These should change. Maybe that we'll have some of the same context uh, or same IDs. That uh, was fine. Uh, we've already done this, and I don't want to don't change the query now. I've already done it, and let's run this again. So you can do it for the first one. So this is a new question. You know, do NFL teams only care about the Super Bowl? Is that like their only focus? Okay, uh, yes, yes, I do. In fact, in the NFL, a team's best player may be the one or two players that have the best chance of winning at the Super Bowl. Uh, the teams would almost always go for the best player. Okay, it's 
fair. Uh, and, and if we if we keep running this, it's actually going to return a different answer every time. I could also return a break here, and it's going to return many answers. But I kind of don't want to do that because it's it's well, it, it you, so it's ten seconds for one, so it's almost a minute if we're waiting for all of them. Uh, but you see, we actually get different different answers every time, uh, which is cool. So we have the temperature up here, which is like randomizing things. And people are like, oh, it's kind of a weird question because NFL teams are supposed to play in the Super Bowl at least four, six times a year. Well, maybe that's not <laughs> not that insightful. Uh, the only time they ever play in the Super Bowl is on the Super Bowl Sunday. Apparently that is true. I'm, you know, I, I didn't know that. I'm not from uh, America. So <laughs> I, I read that on Wikipedia the other day. However, they are supposed to play in the Super Bowl every year, regardless of, of whether they, you know, something. Uh, but sometimes it comes out with some kind of interesting responses, or at least I thought so, uh, when I was you know, looking through everything, uh, where it was, it was talking about things like, oh, they don't care because they're already at the pinnacle of professional football. So why would they care about being in this in this uh, competition because they're already at top. They know they're at the top. They know they're best. It was saying things like that, which I thought was was quite, I thought was quite cool. Um, like this as well. This is kind of interesting, comparing it to the Olympics. Uh, yeah, there's like, I don't know. For me, I think that's cool. There's some pretty interesting outputs. But again, it depends on what you're going for with your your Q and A. Uh, if you if you want something specific, this isn't as good as as extractive Q A, which is is going to extract a specific answer for you. And like you can see, sometimes it's cool, and and sometimes it just comes out with something completely random. So it's kind of like hit and miss. It's but it's interesting. Now, the final one, very quickly. So this is our simplest architecture, which is just a generator model. So this is the, the closed book um, example. So in this case, we're not using a retriever because, well, the retriever acts as the, the book for the model to refer to. So that is for open book models. This now is a closed book model. So it doesn't have any external source of information to, to refer to. So how do we how do we set it up? It's not it, well reasonably easy. So we're going to go up here again. Um, so this time we're actually changing it again. So we're not using we're not using this model. Of course, this is for open book, abstractive QA. Uh, what we want is a generative model like a GPT, uh, well like the GPT models. So what we're going to do is use Luthers. AI, we're going to use, uh, so these guys are, are basically kind of like uh, trying to open source GPT-3 by building GPT-3 models that are not behind the, the OpenAI um, API. So we're just going to use, I think this either their smallest model, or if not, it's one of one of their smallest, 125M. Um, and then here, it's not text to text generation. It's actually just text generation. Okay, so let's remove that. It's not that anymore. Um, so let's run that. And this one can it can take a little bit of time to be fair. Right, so this time we're not we're not using these contexts. We're actually just going to uh, let me just remove this and actually pretty much everything. So what I want to do now is is actually just pass in a query. Uh, so query, and I want to say, okay, how many, how big do I want my output to be? Let's just go with this for now. Do NFL teams only care about playing Super Bowl? The NFL is a great place. So I, one thing with this, where you're just using the, the generator model is that it's kind of random. <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, it is very hard to get good answers from it, I think. Maybe if you use like, we're using a very small model here. You have to think that it's relying on its own internal knowledge. So the bigger the model, the more of that knowledge it can encode within its uh, parameters. So uh, obviously this is probably one of the poorer uh, models to use for this, but it is, it is a little bit difficult. 
<laughs> to get something good from it. So what I'm going to do is just set the max length equal to 32. Uh, so it's a bit longer. Uh, and a great pace to play, but it's not the only pace. So it's actually not like it's not a bad answer. Uh, like, yeah, it's a good place to play. Although even it says NFL, not the Super Bowl. <laughs> Fine. It's a great place to play, but it's not the only place. All right. So there are other places, not just the NFL or the Super Bowl. It should really say Super Bowl. Okay. What happens if we increase that? Probably get something. It's a great place to play, but it's not the only place to play. And it's just repeating itself. So we could probably do the, the whole do sampling and, and, and play around with that. But I'm not I'm not going to, to do that now. What I instead want to do is say, you know, where where do cats come from? So I'm just going to ask a more general question. Where do cats from, come from uh, and see how it does? Uh, cats are a group of animals that are found in the wild. They're the most common species in the wild. They're the most common species in the United States. Okay, now it starts repeating itself. So you probably want to do like a, a smaller max length there, or even remove that so you can just uh, do what it's doing. So, so yeah, I mean it's that's a that's a good answer, I think. But then if we so if we start asking more like a specific questions where there is a uh, well, uh, there is a specific probably answer to this, but I want to say like uh, who is who? No, sorry, who is who was? the first man on the moon so obviously this is specific we you know everyone well, most people know this uh, and it's just like well i don't know <laughs> it just doesn't say anything it just like asks you the same question again so yeah sometimes it's good sometimes it's bad uh, we can we can add oh, you know what is the moon made of what is the moon made of Let's see what that comes out with uh, it's kind of material, that's kind of material, kind of, so yeah, so it's repeating itself and let's try do sample, see what, see what it does. And what is it? Hello, my name is Mary. <laughs> I'm writing the first of my three main articles about the role of the moon, I hope. <laughs> yeah, some weird things. Okay, well, well, we'll we'll leave that there. I think um, I, I like the Mary one more than that, to be honest. So, oh, the way is same in the universe. There are a whole bunch of things. Yeah, so it's given us pretty weird outputs. But anyway, that's that's it for this video. I, I hope it's been useful. Uh, I think you know, abstractive and extractive QA are both pretty cool tools. And uh, honestly, I think they have a lot of use cases across a lot of different industries. So it's definitely worth uh, thinking about it and seeing, you know, you know, can I do something with this? You probably can. Uh, but for now, anyway, I think that's everything. So I hope this has been useful. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.